Hi everyone, I'm doing a tutorial on the MOX F8 and today I want to take a look at creating and deleting measures um, and why you would want to do that, how you can do, use that job to do that. So I'm taking a song that I actually created a four bar vamp at the beginning of and I'm going to start off by just deleting those four bars and then I'm going to recreate them just the way I did originally to show you how that works. And I would like to remind you, I have a book out on the Kindle. It's called the MOXF8 Essentials Tutorial. So you might want to check that out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have a song here. And the first four measures are just this vamp. So to begin with, I'm going to go into the job, measure, delete measure. And hit enter. And I'm going to delete measures one through measures four. So keep in mind, this will delete all of measure one and it will delete all of measure four. So when you uh, mark a starting and ending point with measures, you, uh, it's going to delete those measures that are, it's inclusive. Okay, it's inclusive to the starting measure and, and the ending measure. So one, two, three, four, and I'm going to enter that and that should get rid of that. So that basically took measure five and pushed it back up to the beginning of measure one again. <clears throat> now, this is where I started because this is a 12 bar blues. I'll show you a little bit what it sounds like. Okay, it's got a little bit of a, I've got this now. This is actually the beginning of the 12 bars, but what I want to do is just take one of those measures and turn it into a four bar vamp in the, in the front of it to start with. And this is the way I started because I started out working on the 12 bar blues part of it and then I wanted and then I wanted to add this vamp. So so the first thing I do is I go back in and I want to create measures. And you can set the uh, the time signature for each measure, the number of beats uh, for every single measure, which is a kind of a cool thing that the MOX F8 can do. You can set it obviously I'm just going to do four four measure four four time for each measure. I want to create four measures and I'm going to start at measure one. So the current measure one, which we just listened to, is going to be pushed up and that's going to become measure five. And we're going to have four blank measures at the beginning. So I say enter. We go back to song. Now we go back to measure one here, the beginning of measure one, we play it, there's nothing there. We now have four blank measures. If I go to measure four and start that, four is blank. But then measure five is where that now starts. Okay, so now I've got four blank measures and I want to put some material in there. I just want to put a vamp in. So I'm going to go to job event and this is where I can move events. And I go to copy event. Now I want to copy everything. So this on the left, it has the starting track, it has the uh, source track and the destination track. So you can copy from one track to another, or you can copy into the same track from one location, one time location into another, which is what we want to do here. But I want to do all of the tracks. So I'm going to go through and, uh, and just zip it all the way up to says all. When it gets to all, it automatically sets both the source and the destination track to all. So that's going to, that's going to copy everything. Now remember, I'm on track, I want to go to track five, excuse me, I want to go to uh, measure five, and I want to just, I want to go from the beginning of measure five to the end of measure five. And whenever we copy events, it's a little bit different from how we mark the start and end location for measures. What we're doing is we're, we're, we're setting the starting tick and the ending tick, and it's saying we want to copy all of the events between those two locations. But there's a little bit of a difference between the start and the end tick because it's going to include the start tick, but it's not going to include the end tick. It's, going to, it's smart enough to know that most of the time, see, when I, I want measure five, and I want everything through measure six, up to measure six up to the first beat, the zero, zero tick, the very first tick of measure six, but I don't actually want to include that tick. So if I've got some material that starts at the very beginning of measure six, I don't want to copy that. 
and and this copy tool is smart enough to understand that that's how I'm going to want to set it. So it's going to start at the very first tick on measure five and it's going to go up through to the very last tick of measure five, but it's not going to include the first tick of measure six. And I want to copy this material into uh, starting at measure one. So I'll say enter. Let me go back to song. And that's the first, that's my little vamp there. Uh, now it only did one actually. So uh, typically I forgot what, what I would normally do is I would go over here and determine the number of times I want to do it. So let's just go just for an exercise, do it again. What we're going to do is we're going to copy the same material, that one measure into uh, measure two. And now we want to, we want to fill measure two, measure three, and measure four. So we want to copy uh, it three times. We've already, we've already copied this into measure one. Let's do measure two, three, and four. So we copy it three times, starting at measure two. Whoops. Oh, I know. And then the other thing is that it always reverts back to track one here. So I have to go back and say I want to copy everything. All right. So we'll just review it. Copying everything from measure five to measure six into starting at measure two. We're going to do this three times. So go back to here. And, I, and if I start at measure one, and it's going to go to two, three, four, and then, and then it's actually going to start right at measure five, and that's where my 12 bar blues starts. So that's a little bit of uh, practice with the create and delete measure tool. So I wish you the best of luck in your quest to master the MOXF8 and have a great day.